Welcome to our channel, everyone. Please sign up now to get the latest video updates. Sultan is an archaeological mound site in the West Bank that dates back at least 10,000 years to the Natufian culture. But this mound is special because it hides the ancient city of Jericho. Before excavations began, you might have thought it was just a natural hill, but the hill is made up of many layers of collapsed buildings, mostly made of mud bricks. Over the years, excavations have uncovered the long-lost city of Jericho. Charles Warren named the site Ancient Jericho, but it wasn't until British archaeologist Kathleen Kenyon's work many years later that we learned how old the site really was and how long it had been inhabited. Kenyon and her colleagues recorded the stratigraphic sequences through the mound. They dug and recorded for many years, and by the 1950s, this was one of the most famous archaeological sites in the world. John Garstang put the beginning of archaeology in the 4th millennium BC, 20 years earlier, and he also found the famous walls of Jericho. But it was Kenyans who found that the mound site had been continuously inhabited for at least 8,000 years, from about 9400 BC to 1440 BC. This was a shocking discovery in the 1950s because no one had expected such a large archaeological site to be so old. There was also the possibility that Tel Sultan had been used by the Natufian culture as a camping ground during the Younger Dryas because of the nearby Aina Sultan Spring. This was when Jericho was a village or early proto-city. The tower has a diameter of about 30 feet and stands 28 feet tall. Experts say it would have taken 11,000 days of labor to build, and that doesn't include planning or getting the stone. The discovery was surprising, to say the least, because it was built at a time when experts thought most people were living in small groups. Stone was used to build it, and the walls were 5 feet thick. Inside, there was a 22-step staircase that went all the way to the roof, which at the time was unmatched in size and design. This amazing tower is a pre-pottery Neolithic building. It is not as old as the circular enclosures and decorated stone pillars of Quebec Tep, but it is a more elaborate project. Leonard and Bark thought it was built for astronomical and social reasons. Using computer modeling, they found that when the sun went down on the summer solstice, the shadow of the nearby Jebel Karunto, also called the Mount of Temptation, fell on the pyramid. First, it hits the tower of the ancient city of Jericho, and then it spreads out over the whole town. This must have looked very dramatic and impressive to the people who lived there. More research has shown that the staircase inside the tower points directly toward the mountain's peak. The axis made by the tower staircase and the mountain has the exact azimuth of the settings. Archaeologists believe that the tower and the wall next to it were built to look like the mountainous ridge to the west and to provide a good place to celebrate the summer solstice. Its astronomical function seems pretty clear, and we think that the tower was built not just as a marker or timekeeping device, but also as a guard against a dangerous presence in the darkness cast by a dying sun. It could have been a place to watch for approaching enemies or animals with moving heads. It could also have been a good spot to keep an eye on your own people. Beacon, a place where people could meet and talk in public. If you spent 11,000 days building a building this big in the Neolithic era before pottery, it would have had more than one purpose and been a sign of something. Bark and Lerin said that when people lived in a settled community, they couldn't just pack up and leave if there was a physical or spiritual threat. Instead, they had to build strong permanent protections and convince the community of the importance of these operations. The tower was a way for Neolithic people to turn their fears about the afterlife into a real symbol of power. When it was built, the Levant was in a time of change. People were moving from being nomadic hunter-gatherers to being stationary food producers. This change took a few thousand years and happened all over the Fertile Crescents. Barky and Lyran said that we would even go so far as to say that the most basic fears of a whole community were used by a few people to take control of the people. Jericho's Neolithic Tower may be the first real proof of organized civic manipulation and the use of architecture to control people. We don't know if this is true, but it's one way to look at it. For one thing, it was found about 70 years ago, and it's at least as old as some parts of Quebec Tep 
and Karahan Tep. It's also a stone structure that is much bigger, smarter, and more complicated than anything else found from this time period. In 1999, archaeologists in the Fertile Crescent, Telkara Mills are here in Syria. Only 2% of this site has been excavated so far, and the dating stopped in 2007 because of the war. In the 1950s, the terror of Jericho changed the way history was written. There are actually many sites that are older than Gobekli Tape, Karahan Tape, and Jericho. If we study the area carefully and look at the bigger picture, we can see that human skills, knowledge, and architecture changed gradually over many hundreds of years. We shouldn't be surprised to find new circular enclosures with decorated T-shaped pillars or large stone towers that were built before pottery or large-scale farming. This was all about today's video. Please share your thoughts on our video below. Don't forget to thumbs up and share our video. Please check out our channel and subscribe if you like what you see. We thank you for tuning in. We'll see you all in the next clip.